Okay, this is going to be Chapter 16, The Digestive System, Part 1. And we're going to talk about, uh, do a quick overview of the digestive tract uh, in this section. We're going to talk about histological organization, which is tissue organization, ascites, the movement of digestive materials. Um, quick introduction to the digestive system. Uh, first thing we have is ingestion. We're going to talk about that. Uh, mechanical processing. Uh, our, I'm sorry, on the top one here, ingestion, taking the food in the mouth, mechanical processing done by the teeth and then by the intestine as well, uh, digestion, secretion, absorption, and excretion. So in ingestion, food enters the digestive tract through the mouth. We start chewing on it and breaking it down at that point. We also secrete a saliva, which has enzymes in it that will further help break that down. Mechanical processing, manipulated by the tongue and teeth, and then by the digestive, digestive tract, and the fact that it mixes it as it continues it on through the digestive system. Digestion is the chemical breakdown of food into small organic fragments, and this is done by tons of enzymes that are secreted into uh, the mixture as it continues on through the, the digestive tract. Secretion. Release of water, acids, and enzymes and buffers. So this is going to secrete a lot of material. The stomach has secretions. Whenever you first hit the small intestine, you get more secretions there. The saliva glands provide secretions in your oropharynx uh, that assist in breaking down foods. Uh, there's different phases that foods are broken down in, and we'll discuss those as we uh, come into contact with them. Absorption. Small organic molecules, electrolytes, vitamins, and water across the digestive epithelium. So we move electrolytes, we move organic molecules, we move vitamins, and we move water across this epithelial sac. That's essentially our digestive system, or the varying epitheliums that we'll run into. Uh, and excretion is the removal of waste products from the body, bodily fluids within the digestive tract. Quick overview of the digestive tract. Uh, ingestion starts here. The teeth and the jaws break up. The salivary glands secrete salivary amylase, which starts breaking down carbohydrates. Uh, the pharynx allows for swallowing, swallows it and puts it into the esophagus. Ten inches long or so enters into the stomach. Uh, proteins are starting to are broken down in the stomach by secretions, uh, gastric acids as well. Uh, it turns a bit in the stomach and moves on to the pyloric area. At that point, it moves into the small intestine where the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas get involved. They, supp they supply more digestive enzymes. Uh, the gallbladder um, essentially secretes bile. The liver produces bile and stores it in the gallbladder. Uh, the liver also provides secretions as well and will actually eliminate toxins and, and things like that, uh, also in the large intestine in the form of bile. Um, large intestine, whenever we're talking about small intestine, enzymatic digestion and absorption of water, organic substrates and vitamins, a lot of things are happening in the small intestine in the surface area that's in there. Uh, once we make it to the small intestine, this is on the pathway out, so this is our last opportunity to pull water from this system. Um, so quick overview of the digestive tract and we're going to talk about these independently. Histological organization, we have the mucus, mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis externa, and the serosa. The mucosa is the inner lining of the digestive tract and an example of this is a mucous membrane and we're talking about this area here. The submucosa, second layer of loose connective tissue, large amount of blood vessels and lymphatics, and we'll, we'll see a picture of this here in about two or three more slides. The muscularis externa, a band of smooth muscle cells arranged in an intercircular layer and an outer, outer longitudinal layer. Contractions of these layers in various combinations both agitate and propel materials along the digestive tract. And last but not least, we have the serosa, serous membrane that covers the muscularis externa along with portions of the digestive tract within the peritoneal cavity. Mesenteric doubles as sheets of serous membranes composed of parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum. And if we'll remember that the visceral peritoneum would be touching the organ and the parietal would be on the outside. 
So first of all, we have the mucosa, which is the inner lining. And then we have the submucosa, and we can see it better here, which is pretty much all of our vascular and lymphatics area in the submucosa. The muscularis externa has essentially two layers of muscles that will create wave-like fashions in the, in the intestine. And then on the outside of the intestine, we have the serosa, or the visceral peritoneum. So this would be the actual peritoneum that's touching the organ, the viscera, and it would be the outer surface. So mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, which is smooth muscle, and serosa. Clinical notes, ascites. Uh, peritoneal lining produces fluid. Uh, the liver, heart, and lungs, lung disease can increase return pressure and cause an excessive amount of fluid. Now, if we think of the peritoneal space as a third space, any kind of right heart failure or liver failure that would create a clogging, if you will, uh, from the return of the portal circulation system, which all gets detoxified through the liver before entering back into the circulatory system, any of that will increase the back pressure and cause fluid to spill into that space. And just so happens that that would be the peritoneal space. High amounts of fluid in the peritoneal space. Cavity is ascites, and a characteristic that their stomach looks like is their stomach tends to have um, characteristics of a waterbed. There's lots of fluid in there, there's more fluid than there should be, and it's very, very mobile as far as um, their stomach goes. Uh, the movement of digestive materials. Uh, Pace setter cells in the smooth muscle. Uh, tissue trigger waves of contraction resulting in rhythmic cycles of activity. There are two processes. There's peristalsis, the movement of material along the track, and there's segmentation, mixing of, uh, of the material. And kind of look at this. Longitudinal circular muscle. This is our muscularis externa. And what this essentially does is by peristaltic movement, And contraction, it segments out the material. Oral cavity, the tongue, the salivary glands, we're going to talk about glandular disorders in this section as a clinical note, and the teeth. Uh, the oral cavity performs four functions, senses and analyzes material before swallowing, a mechanical process of material, uh, teeth, tongue, and palate, lubricates material by mixing it with mucus and salivary secretions, begins digestion of carbohydrates and lipids with salivary enzyme, which happens to be salivary amylase. So whenever we're looking at the oral cavity, this is always a side shot, and this is the one we've been looking at. This is the nasal cavity up here. Your soft palate, all in this area here, and then your hard palate. Teeth are here, tongue, you have lymphoid structures that are representatives of the immune system at the back, your palatine tonsils and your actual linguinal tonsils. Your uvula is right here. This would be the nasopharynx, opening of your mouth to your nasal area. Your oropharynx, which is essentially at the base of your tongue. The epiglottis which provides a closure point for the trachea, which is to the anterior, or the esophagus, which is to the posterior, and then the laryngeopharynx. Again, teeth, uvula, palatine tonsil, linguinal frenulum, which is that little thing underneath your tongue, uh, upper labium, which is your upper lip, lower labium, which is your lower lip. The tongue manipulates material inside the mouth. Uh, lateral swellings at the base of the tongue marks the location of the linguinal tonsils, uh, lymph, nodes that, lymph nodules that help resist to fight infections. And it's kind of like your representative of the immune system. Lymphatics are located at all the openings uh, in the body. Salivary glands, you have quite a few of them. You have the parotid salivary gland. And then you have the parotid duct. 
and then you have the submandular gland and then the submandular duct and then you have the sublingual which is underneath your tongue this is what you would use to gleek on someone with uh, just be aware of those glands uh, clinical notes glandular disorders it causes pain and swelling of the glands uh, viral or bacterial you can actually get like a kidney stone or a, a salivary colliculi in there and this can block the duct it's kind of painful because it backs up all the salivary secretions uh, treatment is essentially overstimulation of it same thing that we do whenever we have a kidney stone is we give them fluid to try to push out the stone if it's small enough for them to pass uh, treatment hard candy or lemon drops would facilitate this something sour teeth dental cessation uh, teeth surfaces uh, perform chewing there's essentially uh, various spots on the teeth that we're going to identify it has a neck a root a crown enamel and dentin a dentin is pretty much the bulk of every one of the teeth that we're talking about here or looking at so as far as locations if you got a crown replaced this would be your crown and then the neck would be right at the gum level and then obviously the root would be underneath um, if you've ever had a root canal this is where a root canal takes place the dentin which is all of this is essentially the good portion of every one of the tooth gingiva would be the gum line cementum or the basement membrane between the root and the periodontal ligament this is the bone your jawbone the alveolus alveolus um, branches of the blood and vascular area which we'll talk about in the next slide essentially come up through the root uh, teeth continued the root canal pulp cavity receives blood vessels through a narrow canal called the root canal the periodontal ligament extends from the dentin to the root of the surrounding bone cementum covers the dentin of the root and then as far as teeth we have ICBMs um, and this helps us identify how, what kind of teeth we have incisors which are sharp and in the front cuspids which are canine for cutting and kind of off to the side of the incisors bicuspid or premolars they're flat for mashing and grinding and then molars which are flat for mashing and grinding incisors cuspids bicuspids molars ICBMs and again these are all of the areas of the teeth crown neck root most of the tooth is dentin gingiva root canal cementum periodontal ligament and this is where all of your nerve supply and your vascular supply to the tooth would come from deciduous teeth primary teeth or milk teeth or baby teeth uh, most children have about 20 deciduous teeth secondary dentation or your permanent de uh, dentures or your permanent teeth are called your secondary dentation uh, adult teeth push aside by eruption or they erupt up underneath they'll push out the teeth uh, that are the baby teeth that are in its place wisdom teeth are third molars that develop in areas that will not co come out via eruption are called impacted teeth Uh, so these are your primary teeth or your your milk teeth essentially and there's about 20 of them and then whenever the other teeth are coming in or they've developed they'll push these actually out and these would be called your secondary teeth um, I see and then remember these are bicuspids which are premolars B M the pharynx serves as a common passageway for liquid solid food and air the esophagus uh, we're going to talk about swallowing clinical note on swallowing foreign bodies clinical note on esoph esoph esophagitis 
and diaphragmatic or hiatal hernias. Esophagus is a muscular tube about 10 inches long. It conveys solid food to the stomach and it has two sphincters or muscular closings. It has an upper, upper esophageal sphincter and a lower esophageal sphincter, uh, generally under active contraction, not to allow gastric contents into the esophagus. Now, if we get gastric contents into the esophagus, this is going to give us something that we're probably all familiar with, which is heartburn. Swallowing or deglution. Complex process that can be initiated voluntarily, but proceeds automatically after it begins. We are not consciously thinking about the movement of, of food down our esophagus, into our stomach, say, wait a second, I need the cardiac sphincter to close, and you know, secrete an appropriate amount of acids. We're not thinking about any of that. So the voluntary portion is a swallowing. After that, we have no control over it or it's involuntary. And this would be uh, the oral phase, which would be chewing up the bolus and putting it to the back of the, back of the tongue. So we initiate pharyngeal phase, which is swallowing into the esophagus, and then esophageal phase, which we get peristalsis that will move it down, uh, lower esophageal sphincter, which is the cardiac sphincter, and then this bolus of food will actually enter into the stomach. <laughs> Clinical notes, swallowing to foreign bodies. 80% occur in children, uh, dentures in an adult for the second most frequent type that we see. Uh, children, younger children especially, or oral explorers, they have a tendency to put everything into their mouth. Most of these things, as long as they're small enough to pass through the intestine, uh, pass spontaneously. Uh, clinical note, esophagitis and diaphragmatic or hiatal hernias. <clears throat> Weakened or permanent, relaxed, lower esophageal sphincter uh, can cause inflammation of the esophagus. And this is from reflux or backflow of the highly acidic contents of the stomach into the esophagus, which the esophagus is not designed to take a pH change like that and house um, <clears throat> a lot of gastric secretions. And this ends actually part one. If you have any questions over part one, feel free to contact me. Name's Roy Smith, 405-219-7613, or you can email me at smithartimso.net. Thank you.